Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on this special episode of the Fat Burning Man Show, where we talk about real food and real results. How would you like to print your own money? Well, unless you work with the Federal Reserve, you're going to have to get creative. But in the face of rampant food inflation, growing your own food comes pretty close. The price of rice, for example, I was just reading today, rice is the world's staple food, has increased 70% globally in 2020. Let me say that again. The price of rice has increased globally 70%. When you hear some of these inflation numbers coming out, they're just not true. So. We've got to get prepared. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the price of food to skyrocket? Health is a survival skill. And also getting access to clean water and healthy, fresh foods, nutrient-dense foods, this is extremely important. And it's only going to become more so because our, our food system is under attack. We don't know exactly why or, or who's behind it, but it's now blatantly obvious to everyone who's watching. So. Today on the show, we have a throwback episode with Ron Finley, known as the Gangsta Gardener, and he's here to teach you critical survival skills, the ability to grow your own food no matter where you are. So the, the city in L.A. tried to shut him down, but instead of giving up, Ron helped change the law. So we need this man and people like him more than ever. All right, so in today's throwback episode with the incredible Ron Finley, you're about to learn why growing your own food is a bit like printing your own money, how Ron changed the laws of urban gardening, how to change a kid's life with a homegrown tomato, and much more. Let's go hang out with Ron. Hi folks, I'm stoked to be here with Mr. Ron Finley here today. Nicknamed the Gangsta Gardener and the Renegade Gardener, Ron Finley planted organic vegetables in the parkway in front of his South Los Angeles home and a revolution was started. Ron's belief that gardens build communities has blossomed into a quest to change how we eat and the eventual founding of the Ron Finley Project, an organization dedicated to changing culture and growing people. So Ron, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, you're welcome, Abel. Thanks for having me. You bet. So you started small. You just took a bit of land in your neighborhood, started growing food, but you accidentally started a revolution. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I had I had no idea that I would be sitting here talking to you, um, and um, that this would go all over the universe. Yeah. So it's um, it's kind of crazy to me that. Um, it's almost like I've been nominated for this position sure. <laughs> that I had that I had no idea I'm, I was supposed to be doing. I'd vote for uh, you, man. <laughs> I, I honor it and and um, I'm inspired by it. And the fact that, um, yeah, you know, I've, I've been able to change lives around the world is is um, it, it, it gets me up every morning. Yeah. You know, it's a, some of the some of the correspondence that I get. Um, you know, you read them and, you know, you start tearing up just the simple, simple thing that growing food, you know, but uh, but it's it's be it goes further than that to me because it's, it's not it's not about food. It's about I tell people I grow people yeah. and, they, and hopefully they, they grow food. So, I mean, the the common denominator to everything to me is people. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where I started. So, I mean, I yeah, this I mean, a lot of people know the story about the um you know i started gardening on my parkway i started an organization where we started putting gardens in and around south central for free you know to anybody who wanted um um a garden and then you know the dynamics of a group kicked in yeah and you know my group really was you know even though i was the founder it wasn't what i intended it to be you mm -hmm. know all of us it was you know, well, that, hey, those people have a Mercedes. And I'm like, and they, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care where they, if you're in South Central and you want a garden and you say you're going to take it up, you get a garden. So it, it became stuff like that. And I, I, I didn't want to be a part of that because that's not my business. I'm not the government. I don't care where, how much money. It wasn't a poor, downtrodden, sure. um, you know, people down on their look kind of, you know, charity case. You know, it yeah. wasn't that. It was like, the whole community and a place like South Central, you, you know, you have, you know, $200,000 houses and you have $2 million houses mm -hmm. in South Central. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of neighborhood. So 
the to the whole area to me i call them food prisons not food deserts yeah. you know so um and i just wanted to change that so i had to uh, again start another group <laughs> you know with <laughs> that kind of you know had my belief you know my to keep it where i wanted to keep it you know yeah. where which was what we call in the hood nobody set tripping you know what set tripping is is like uh this religion don't hang with that religion this right. gang don't hang with that gang you know that we call it, we don't set trip you know it's like all comers you know we're all human beings and yeah. um that's that's how that's how i want to um treat this. And that's one of the coolest things about, about food and, and eating. You're all equal when you come to the table, you know what I mean? And, and it's one of those rare opportunities for that. But I, I want to share something that, uh, I experienced. I, I worked in DC right out of college and sometimes I'd volunteer. And I remember I, I volunteered to help some, some kids in the city learn how to cook. And, uh, and I, I pulled out a big like heirloom tomato and a lot of the kids freaked out because they're just like, what is that? I've never seen that before. And I'm like, you've never seen the tomato before? <laughs> like, where where are we at? You know, and, and so when I watched your TED talk, I was getting all choked up because it is so poignant that you can you can change someone's life with something as simple as as a tomato. And I think you said in your talk, uh, if if kids grow kale, they'll eat kale, right? <laughs> Because yeah. cause you now have skin in the game. And yeah. that's what's happening now. Everything, I mean, everywhere. I don't care, you know, what your economic background is. If you don't have a hand in any of your food, you're a slave. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care how much money you got. And people don't get it. They're controlling a, a major, major portion of your life where you get yeah. your nutrients from is your food. And um that 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 has to change. I mean, people. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to go out and grow their own food, yeah. you know. But the thing with a with a child, if you show a child from day one where food comes from, it doesn't come from the grocery store like most. Right. And that's that's what you're talking about. These kids have never seen a tomato like that because a lot of them haven't been to the grocery stores or the the stores in their neighborhoods don't have these kind of uh, this kind of produce. Yeah. Um, it's all about changing that paradigm. The, this system was designed like that. These neighborhoods were designed like that. Yeah. We have to change the design, and, that, and that's what I'm trying to do. I am, um, yeah. I mean, once you can, once you get a child in that garden and they start, they start gardening, it gets seduced by the soil. It's, 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 it happens. I've seen it happen too many times. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's sad that, and I'm so glad that you. I'm not, how do I say, I'm glad that you got to see that. I'm glad that, because a lot of people don't realize that, because you have these people, oh, if those people wanted to eat better, they could, and they don't get it. There's right. nowhere to eat better in these communities, yeah. and, you know, nowhere. But you're changing that in, in your own special way. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, yeah, I am, but it's not, it, it's just not at the rate, I guess, that I want to, but sure. I, I, I have to. I have to celebrate my, um, my, you know, my wins. I do. I have to, I, and it's hard sometimes because it ain't, it ain't nowhere. It's not close to where I want to see or what I want to see. See, my whole thing is if I bake a cake, I want to eat a piece of it. I'm, it's not about 2020, 2050, 2060 to yeah. me. It's about right now. My future is five minutes from now. Yeah. Okay. So I want to see if I have a, a, a hand in the change, I want to see it. I don't, you know, I want to be a part of the future. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. Well, I hope this tree grows in 2062. <laughs> now nah, I want to, if I planted it, I want to eat some of the apples off the tree and, and, and see it, you know, see it grow. And I'm going to share them, but I want to yeah. see it, you know? Well, that's the good thing about tomatoes. They grow a lot faster than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I well, what I did, I got to tell I did have this, um, this freak situation with a nectarine tree. Okay, it's 18 inches of soil, but I did make the soil and I used the guys, um, was it Square for Gardening, Mel Bartholomew, he has this mix that he does. Yeah, I think it's peat, peat moss, compost, and, um, and, so, and some rich soil, if I remember right. And I put it in, and there's a, just a, a nectarine seed that was thrown over there. And so, yeah. you know, I look a little later and there's this branch. Huh. And then a year later is a tree with 
with fr- with one piece of fruit on it, you know. And I'm like, how the hell is this thing growing in 18 inches of soil? Yeah. I have this giant. I could do. I could actually take the computer and let you see it. It's just a ginormous nectarine tree now. You yeah. know, two years, three, three years later, they're fruits. Um, so wow. it's just. Um, I think if we if we expose like people, kids to this, 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 this magic, this alchemy, this Mm -hmm. mother nature, what she does, it's, it's like magic, man. It's, it's it's so simple, but yet it's so, so complex, you know? Yeah. So what have you seen in people who have gone from, you know, maybe not knowing what a tomato is, a kid, for example, to, you know, working on one of your gardens, seeing how it kind of transforms uh, not just everyone who's walking by and seeing it, but especially the people who are getting the dirt under under their fingernails. What does that do to people? The soil under their fingernails, not yeah. the dirt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> uh, the the I've been able to witness just just people changing their whole lives, and and because it changes your mindset, mm-hmm. it it of what of what's important, of where things come from, or what happens. It's like with me. Gardening taught me that nothing ever dies ever. Okay, it's an energy transfer. When yeah. you see, when you see compost do what it do, you you realize, okay, this is a lot of interesting stuff here. But I got two things: I got nitrogen and I got a carbon, mm-hmm. and I put them together. Why am I getting 150 degrees if this was dead? Yeah. You know, so it just it made me look at life differently, like like with uh, with us has been organic material. Mm -hmm. Do we die? Does Mm -hmm. anything die? You know, or does it just an energy transfer? And that I mean, when you when you when you have a child put a little teeny seed in the soil and they take care of it, the lessons that are being taught there are (laughs) um, they're unmeasurable. You can't measure. them. Yeah. uh, Because. They're they're learning how to take care of things. They they they're learning that there is a system that you can't jump, right. <laughs> you know, to to the next. No, there's a system in place here, and you have to follow it. And yeah. every, right now, everybody's trying to change that system. And so I tell people, Mother Nature, if she, if it was, she would, if it was Vegas, she'd be the house because Mother Nature don't lose. <laughs> you know, if you think she, if you think Mother Nature Nature loses, ask those people on Pompeii how it worked for sure. them. Yeah, <laughs> she don't. Mother Nature don't play. You know. Yeah. So, um, but what I would like people to realize in, in my garden, we are nature. Mm-hmm. We're the same as the bumblebees and the and the worms and the and the butterflies. You know, we're we're not going to see. We're nature. We're part of nature, and I think we lose sight of that. Yeah. You know that that we are part of this ecosystem. So let's. Why don't we just like a bee builds a their their honeycombs in a beehive? Why don't we make an efficient system for ourselves to live, for ourselves to survive? Mother Nature's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's us. That's got that's gonna have a major problem if we continue the way we continue. And everybody, I don't care what economical led um, place you're at, what religion you follow, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. If you what color you are, it's one blood, <laughs> one yeah. people, and and it's one planet. Yeah, and and that's such a good point. Like when you start growing something, you're you're kind of responsible for a good change that you see. You realize that maybe being a human isn't all about consumption. It's about production as well. You, it's about creating something. And that's that's one of the things I love about your story is that, you know, you're an artist, right? And so you see growing something as as an agent of creation. And I think so many people miss the point when they're just like, oh, I, I have to do this. I, I have to garden or I, I have to, you know, grow my own food and what a bore, what a chore that is. It's a gift, right? Yeah, the way I see it, it is. And it, once you get to it, it seduces you. And mm-hmm. once you taste the flavor, and, and I think a lot of it too is is pride. Mm-hmm. You know, like I tell people, I want to see gang fights over who's got the biggest cu- cucumbers or the baddest. <laughs> beef. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that's what that's what I want to see. It, it's it's this pride that you get in growing your own food that 
that you can't get any, you can't get it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And my thing, what is more sexier than going to your backyard, your, your lady or your man or your man or whatever, and you make someone a meal mm -hmm. right out your backyard. I mean, that's sexy to me. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a win-win situation. Yeah. And, um, that's, that's, that's what it's, it should be that easy. Um, uh, and they, they have communities. I saw a piece on, um, the Sunday show where they have a place in Georgia now where the community is built around a farm. Yeah. So they have a farm within 50 feet of everybody wow. that's in the back that everybody uses. And this place apparently has um, the um, the places the, the was it the properties are five times the price of everything else around the around the um, city. Huh. Yeah. So they so people are people are getting real serious about their health because I mean we we have to realize them I mean, we're we've been terrorized mm -hmm. and <laughs> by fast food companies and by you know these big chemical companies. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's what's happening here? What's happening in Hawaii is is a travesty. I mean, they're ruining paradise in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what was it? A, did you have a moment when you maybe you were eating out of the boxes or bags, processed food or whatever? Did you have a moment where it was just like, this is wrong? Like, I got to do something else. You know, one of the one of the moments was when I went to the I went to the store and. Um, I was looking at tomatoes, as a matter of fact, and I, okay. you know, I picked it up and they're all the same. They're all perfect. Yeah. You know, I look and it says coated with shellac to preserve, you know, <laughs> from the press. It had this label on there and I'm like, yo, isn't shellac what we used to use <laughs> in, in, in wood shop when I was, you know, when I was, in, yeah. <laughs> when I was in, when I was in, uh, was you know, here in high school. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I'm cool with the shellac. Why do I need shellac on my, this says shellac right here. Right. Why do I need shellac on my tomatoes? <laughs> you know? And I was, uh, even though it's food grade shellac, sure. you know, it's still shellac. Yeah. <laughs> and that was one of the things like, okay, I'm, I'm done. And, and you, and, and another one was constantly seeing, you know, sitting, watching the news at dinner time, and you know, oh, there's a recall on, on item number 257Z7. You know, if you have this, please return it to the store. And I'm like, how many people have been sitting there eating 2570 <laughs> and and they're sit watching the news and they're eating? I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So I mean it was it was a couple of it was a couple of things like that. But then also going to the schools and seeing what these kids kids eating, looking yeah. back and seeing what I had to eat. They, there's no way that we can expect our children to compete if mm -hmm. they're, they're eating the, the, the garbage that they're eating. It has no nutritional value whatsoever. Yeah. It's by design. And to me, um, it's, um, these, these kids are only going to wind up in a couple of places. And one of them is the industrial prison complex, mm -hmm. you know, because you can't compete. You're not learning what you're supposed to be learning, mm -hmm. you know, has you know the brain capacity, your body, you're not getting those nutrients in your body where you have um where you can take in the nourishment that you need to take in. Yeah. Now do you find that once you once you start growing something in a neighborhood, the people really is it as simple as people just start eating it or is there more education where you need to teach people how to cook it or or how does that work? That's a good yeah. No, it's not. It's hard as it's very hard and it's <laughs> yeah no it's 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 hard being, especially with being an african-american what i have to deal with is doubly because um first of all you have the convenience of mm -hmm. the convenient food that is convenient killing you but they don't tell you that mm -hmm. secondly being an african-american we have this legacy of this what was it called slavery mm -hmm. and uh so a lot of people can't get past the fact that, you know, I don't, dirt, the soil, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do dirt. I don't grow. I'm not, a, I'm not a slave. We, we don't. Yeah. And it's like, yo, 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 no, no, no. You don't understand. This is the gold right here under your feet. That's the gold. Mm -hmm. That's how they got that big white house on the hill. It wasn't because of you. It was because of the soil. Mm -hmm. So now 
just imagine for like, I don't know, five seconds that you own the soil. Now imagine what you could have. Mm -hmm. So we have to turn that and re make people realize, no, it's the soil. The soil is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the soil is, is it's, it's alive. Yeah. You know, so it's not dirt. It's soil. <laughs> It's, it's alive. It's, it has, I tell people you are, you know, they tell us you are what you eat. No, you are what you eat eats. Yeah. Plants eat soil. <laughs> they get the their, their, their nutrients out of the soil. Mm -hmm. That's how we have healthy plants. Take that, take that same metaphor and apply it to a child. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't have healthy soil as a child, what will you become? Mm -hmm. Another, another thing, uh, money don't grow on trees. I don't know who came up with that. That's one of the silliest things you could ever imagine. Money does grow on trees. <laughs> billions and billions and billions of dollars year right. after year after year grows on trees. And guess what? The tree is even worth money. Mm -hmm. You know, but we've been taught that money don't grow on trees. Mm -hmm. But as you know, some of these organic apples, what do they cost us? Four dollars, five dollars a piece. Right. Yeah, a lot of, and look at the, look at let's take a look at the chain of that tree, from the people who planted it to the people who harvested it mm -hmm. to the distributor to the supermarket and yeah. then to your table. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of people being um, uh, employed and paid from yeah. uh, from tree, from trees. Yeah, from growing something, from creating something, from being a part of that. Now, I, I also heard you say, I think it was in your TED talk that. Uh, Growing your own food is like printing your own money. I never heard it put that way, but I think that's brilliant. It's funny because some people I, I've I've seen, um, <laughs> I've seen some like uh, what do they call them like Facebook posts and different posts, and it's like this guy's an idiot. You know, <laughs> growing you can't grow money, and it, it's like it's illegal to grow money. Where does this clown come from? I mean, yeah. they, I've seen people like two hundred. They're just skewing me, and I'm like, yeah. Welcome either to the they internet. get it, <laughs> either they get it, or they're they're acting like they don't get it. You yeah. know, um, but but yeah, it's funny. But a lot of the people who get it, it's like, damn, you're right. They yeah. they do realize it. You know, it, it is because you're saving us. You're saving on so many different parts of your life mm -hmm. when you grow your food from your health, from time um, that you can have now, um, from you being the uh, out there, it's, it becomes your meditation. Yeah. You know, like with me, it became my, it became my solace. And, um, and we're creating an ecosystem when we grow. That's mm -hmm. something that was kind of sprung up on me. I didn't know it just so happens the things that I planted would attract Hummingbirds. I get kissed by hummingbirds every day. I mean, who 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 don't love that? Wow. You know that I have monarchs. You yeah. know, on their way to Mexico. It's crazy that I um, all these insects, dragonflies. You don't see dragonflies over here, right? So, and it's amazing because I can take my um, garden on the street and look across the street or next to me, and there's no life, none. Yeah. There's yeah. They're, they don't have finches. They don't have blue jays. They, I have birds I haven't seen in, in 20 years, 30 years in this neighborhood. Um, as you know, like all the species of things are dying now. And it's, it's mm -hmm. amazing that, um, that I'm getting to see stuff that I saw as a child. Yeah. Uh, just by planting food and planting flowers. And, and the, what the, one of the biggest things I do is like you were saying, I, I treat it a lot. It is art. Mm -hmm. So I apply the colors of nature to give people color therapy. Mm -hmm. So when they walk by, it's not just blah. It's like, whoa, what's it's it's these beautiful colors. I mean, and, and who does color better than Mother Nature? She yeah. created them. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we here you can paint with your with your with your flowers, with your food, with mm -hmm. your that's your palette you have to paint with. And that's yeah. how I use the garden. And that affects people because especially in an area where they don't see that mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all it's whoa what the you know people just do the slow disney small world you know uh drive by you yeah. know when they when they because it's something they don't they don't expect to see they don't expect to see you know 14 foot sunflowers on a parkway right um that uh yeah i mean it, it's and what does this really cost 
I mean, it's nominal. I mean, what does it really cost to have this beauty? It doesn't cost nothing. Yeah. So why do some neighborhoods have it and some neighborhoods don't? Right. And they know, and, and all the tests already know it. They know what that do that what that does for you. They know how that affects you. They know how mm-hmm. it calms you. They know how it puts you in another state of mind. Mm-hmm. So wh- why 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 aren't we doing that? Yeah, we're I, we're starting to right. It's it's like for for a while there, the past five or ten years, it seemed like we were missing out on a whole generation turning over and new generations starting over and and not knowing any of these you know, ancient traditions that we have, like gardening. We all used to have gardens in our backyard. We used to eat from those, right? Um, that that changed. And hopefully, you know, enough people can kind of get back on board with that because it's not hard, right? It's it's relatively straightforward to get something simple to grow. Can you Can you just, you know, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, there's this thing called sun, <laughs> water, soil and the yeah. seed and you put the water on it and you let the sun hit it and it grows it's like it's amazing to me that this is what i do should not be special mm-hmm. you know i i should i i should not you know i i mean i i speak all over the world now on this and yeah. and i don't you know i'm i'm just some guy that put a carrot in the ground you know mm-hmm. and, and all of a sudden this is special and it, and it and I I honestly but it shouldn't be special feeding yeah. yourself like you said in the beginning it shouldn't be special <laughs> yeah. you know so what what I want people to realize that again I'm not telling you to grow all your food but imagine if you did it collectively imagine mm-hmm. if you had a neighbor or the person next to you or the person across the street from you or all of you guys got together and decided what you're going to grow okay so therefore I know you have the orange tree and and a pomegranate tree, and now I'm growing kale and 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 rhubarb and Sally's, you know, growing the lettuces, and somebody else's is, you know, growing I don't know passion fruit or whatever. Mm-hmm. So just imagine, you don't so you don't have to grow all this yourself. Mm-hmm. So just imagine collectively, because as I'm sure you know, you cannot eat all the food that you can grow. It's right. impossible. You'll be eat 24 hours a day. Yeah. So about if we had these kind of neighborhoods where people shared now you know your neighbors now there's a communication now you're creating community and safety you know now you know my children and i know your children um now the conversation we're not behind bars and looking out of our windows and scared you know to communicate with one another um yeah gardens build community period Mm -hmm. build relationships you know yeah um real simple good in good out yeah so why did we why did we lose our backyard gardens why did that happen how what and and then what can we do to turn that around how because we we it's just like i think what's happening with the whole digital computer age right now um these kids i mean i i I gotta i'm gonna put pomona college on blast because i had and i and i love them but they, they had some students come out to help me, and I gave them one of the old dr- the old drills that you turn like this, mm-hmm. and they couldn't figure it out. They couldn't. I gave them a drill into the drill in two bits. I said, "Hey, we need to put holes." And then, so I said, <laughs> "Okay, how many college kids does it take to drill a hole in a box?" You know, <laughs> I said, "One about ten of y'all, right?" I mean, it's we're we we don't we had we brought up a gener several generations that don't do anything. Mm-hmm. OK, we are and I, it's scary because I don't know what's going to happen with everything being automated. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I was in the Barilla pa- 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 um, pasta factory in, um, in Italy, the biggest in the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, OK, we're at the machines three, two, three stories high. Yeah. And I'm like, where are the people? Where are the people? Where are the people? You know what was. You know what was on the lawn when you walk up? There's robots, little robots mowing the lawn. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And Jeez. so what? What's we have to create? That's what we 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 got we we believed in the whole convenience thing. Now mm-hmm. we don't have skills. Everybody's not going to make money off the internet. Yeah. You know, everybody can't. Everybody's not going to be a programmer or so. We need to get back to where we made stuff. 
mm-hmm. where we created stuff. And I'm not talking 3D printing. I'm talking taking some wood, taking some wire, taking some metal, uh, and really making stuff and trading stuff, um, trading food, canning. And and like you said, that's that's people used to can. And you, yeah. you could have that food in your cellar or in your wherever. So that's, these are the, the, the normal things that we have to get back to. And it's, I don't know when it's going to hit. A, I don't, but it's scary because I have college kids work with me, man. And it's, it's bad. It's, mm-hmm. um, it's things that we took for granted. Um, uh, like the way I think they call it I do, critical thinking. I'm like, it's not thinking. There's no, you know, you think outside the box. I said, there is no damn box. What are you yeah. talking about? I think outside the box. It's called thinking. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing critical about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the way we're going to change this is we have to get we have to get in the, in the soil. We have to get back to where we touch and, and do things. We have to get back where everything's not social media, mm-hmm. you know, where because that's not that's that's not going to social media is not going to feed. you. It's not going to put food on your plate. Yeah. You know. And can we mesh technology with um, with agriculture? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we physically have, I think we're losing a lot from not being in the soil um, and, and, and from doing every, everybody sitting around, you know, behind their computers like yeah. we are right now today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a double-edged sword. For sure. Yeah, no, it is because it, it. I mean, definitely, it gets the it gets the word out. I mean, if you take my um, some of the talks I did, especially my TED talk. I mean, without without um, social media, it wouldn't have hit what it hit. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, it went viral because of the message for one, and then because of social media. Where can you get that kind of message out that fast? Yeah. But we also have to realize that we have to. Um, we have to close the, you know, the computers and get out and, and really make and touch and build and, and participate and have conversations where you touch people, where you hug people, mm-hmm. where you engage. And that's what you can't it's you can't do that. You can you can't engage people on the computer, really. Yeah. You know, um, and and so there's social skills that we are, we've there's generations that have lost social, any kind of social skills. Um, yeah, isn't that and, interesting? It's like we, we kind of we're losing our skills with the the physical world, and then all of a sudden we're also losing our skills with each other. All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> like at the same time. Was that so? Was that gonna make us? Gonna make us drones? Yeah, you know. And how many people don't know how to cook now? Right. Because of convenient food. How? That's scary. Think about that. There's mm-hmm. people that literally don't cook because of convenient food. Yeah. You know. It's, it's not that convenient. Right. If it's killing you, it can't be. It's really not that convenient. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so not that it's, cheap either. It looks it looks cheap, right, at first. But when you see the value of, of growing your own food and what it does to your body and how every other bill, especially the health-related ones, start to just take a nosedive, it is, it's life-changing. And you, you said in your TED Talk, it's like manufacturing your own reality, right? When you start when you start to create something, when you start to really be involved with the physical world, when you f- when you look at soil and and it, you suddenly understand that it's alive and you're responsible for it. Something changes, right? Oh, totally. I mean, then that's um, it's it's like I said, it's a seduction. You know, it, it literally does. And then when you realize and and you stop and you see what it does. I mean, that, that it's this perfect circle when I tell people a leaf falls for a reason in a particular season. It's mm-hmm. by design. Mm-hmm. Okay, that leaf is just not a leaf. Like, and, and it's Stacking functions is what that leaf does. It has multiple functions. First, it gives the energy to the tree. Right? And then when it's time where the tree you know, goes down, the leaf falls off and it becomes a bed around the tree, which is it serves as a mulch. Mm-hmm. So the water just doesn't go in. It percolates down because of these leaves. And then what do these leaves turn into? They turn into soil. <laughs> yeah. They turn. They, so the tree is now feeding itself. And then what happens? It fruits and it starts all over again. So when you look at these circles, that's these these systems that's been in place since the dawn of time uh you realize how really really simple and magical it is at the same time but 
we we have to start looking at things as resources mm-hmm. and not as um, trash. Like a leaf is not trash to me. When I look at a leaf, I think money. When I look at a leaf, I think I can make compost and I can sell that compost. Mm-hmm. So we have to, we have to, our job is to make gardening sexy. Yeah. You know, our our job, that's why I call this what I do, gangster gardener. Yeah. We have to make gangster. We have to make we gotta get gangster for Mother Nature. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, if you heal your mother, you heal yourself. And that's what we need to do. So I um I look at things so differently now has everything I, I said, okay, what can I use that for? I know what it was used for, but what can I also use it to take it out of the um the stream mm-hmm. you know the the rubbish the trash stream what can i use this for whereas when i when i finish with it it's dust <laughs> yeah you know that's the way we have to um we have to just repurpose restructure renew revitalize rebuild um, rethink uh everything yeah you know and it goes and against how, how, getting a new iPhone every year, right? And trashing whatever. You know, the, the amount of trash that we create is we're so desensitized. It's really terrible that they have it set up like that because they I mean, where is this all these products going? Where mm-hmm. what kind of landfill? I mean, do they have any consciousness? They they literally tell you, hey, when the new iPhone comes, we got a program. As soon as the new iPhone come out, you get a new one if you sign up for this program. Mm-hmm. That means that um you're gonna make this uh, you're gonna make this obsolete it's in a lot of these phones that the the things that's on them is not that new mm-hmm. you know when they come out and have mid-year it's it's like oh yeah okay they added a button and an app and you know your the <laughs> colors you know they got three more colors or something but <laughs> yeah. um they they really need to rethink that and and be more responsible far as what's happening to our landfill all this all this pollution from these phones mm-hmm. that are they're going into a landfill somewhere you know mm-hmm. can all this stuff be recycled is it recycled how many phones do you have sitting in a drawer in your home yeah you know so um it's um to me it it's 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 kind of criminal yeah um we're creating this and of course where does everything wind up in mm-hmm. our ocean yeah so it's our responsibility to actually make sure that something grows too <laughs> So we're uh, we're coming up on time, Ron. But uh, before we go, I want to make sure that we uh, we tell people what you're working on next, where they can find you. What I'm working on right now, actually, uh, last last night, um, the um, I'm we did a movie with um, with John Legend, Get Lifted, cool. came on as a producer. Uh, it's called Can You Dig This, and yeah. um, we have a program where you can go to um, can you dig this film.com and you can actually bring it to your city. Um, and um, that's that came on um, video on demand last night. And it also premiered um, in different cities around the country awesome. um, at the same time last night. So if you want to see the film, it's, it's pretty dope. Uh, you can go and look at the clips online. But that that's what I'm doing now. And um, I'm. Um, um, man, I'm just speaking around the world and, um, uh, headed to MIT media lab, um, next week, you know, cool. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of good things happening. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of good things happening. I mean, I, um, just working on my plan to take over the world, you know, <laughs> for mother, right? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I, that's the person that we need to be responsible for because she's been responsible for us. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, I don't want to sound like no greeny hippie or something, but but when you when you think about it, man, we all want fresh air. We all want clean water and we all want healthy, nutritious, vital food. And um, these things are being taken from us because one thing, because of greed, yeah. you know, and definitely not the need. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to save our seeds. Yeah. We're... Well, Ron, I really can, can get behind what you're doing. I think a lot of people who are listening are going to be flocking to you hopefully after this, because we need to see more of it. I, I appreciate your support and having me here and, and thank you for being there. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. You're welcome. Anytime.